I think that Rick Riordan did a really good job with how he worded his prophecy because mm -hmm. it's so vague that it like is something that would absolutely drive you insane. Like mm -hmm. the idea that like you will make a choice and then however you decide that choice is what decides the fate of the entire world. And so it's not even like a thing of like it, there's no way you could know what that would be. Like, even though Percy knows who he's fighting and what will likely happen, and he knows it's going to happen when on his birthday, when he turns 16 and things like that, but he doesn't, there's no way that he could possibly, you make millions and billions of choices a day. There's no way that he could possibly know what the choice he's even going to make is that could possibly ruin the world. And it just makes that's such an overwhelming thought to like know that something you could do one day could somehow destroy everyone you love and you don't even know what it is that you're going to do that makes that happen. The tragedy of what happens when you run away from fate. And I mean, even Luke, that's his basic story too, is his mom found out that like he was going to do some terrible things. She saw it and she went a little bit crazy and she was trying to avoid it hermes was trying to avoid it luke himself was trying to avoid it i don't know how much he knew but he he probably was trying to actively avoid it and um look at what he became and he probably fulfilled every bit of what she thought he would become you met your dad the irony that she did that to like find as much information as she could about his future so that she could help protect him mm -hmm. and not only does having that the oracle stuff happen inside of her brain make her become like mentally ill but the one thing she sees is, is her son becoming like an absolute monster and so all these all those other years after that when he was with her she was afraid and knew that he was going to become that one day and then when he asks Hermes about like, you know, do you know my fate? And he's like, yeah. And, but Hermes won't tell him the fate, like his fate. Obviously that's never a good idea for anyone to know, no matter who you are. And, um, but that just like enrages him more. It's like that whole thing of like, everybody knows this thing about me, but nobody will tell me what it is. Like that, I do hate that feeling a lot when everyone else seems to know what's going on, but you don't. But it's that sort of thing that in somebody like Luke that just became like resentment and anger and like wanting to like get like revenge basically on them for not being like, I'm going to prove to them that I'm the best that's ever been to like prove that these people being worried about me is wrong, except that he fell right into what they saw yeah. by being so obsessed with that. If Hermes would have just like gotten over his himself and been there or when Luke was growing up instead of being like, it's too hard to be around my son because he one day like will die. And it's like, get over yourself. Like they're a child. You should be in their life. Even if it's hard for you, you're the adult, get over your own feelings and be there for this child that doesn't know any better. Mm -hmm. um, if he would have done that and been around in Luke's life, Luke wouldn't have ended up the way that he was. The, the whole like pact they make, like the, the big three gods of, they find out that there's this prophecy that's going to come true one day where one of their kids is going to either save the world or like destroy it. And their reaction to it is like, okay, we're just going to stop having children. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what if you just like, I don't know, treated your children better? Like actually like took care of them, did all the things that Percy got you to do after he you know, got you to listen to him finally? What if you just did all of that stuff in the 1940s and then it wouldn't, you wouldn't have had to stop having kids because you would have been taking care of them. Yeah. And so the kids that were around wouldn't be so angry at you that they would be willing to destroy the entire world to make you angry. Mm -hmm. But it's like, they, they don't, instead they're just like, we're just gonna stop having children because we just, we could never take care of them. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah. It's so stupid. And also like the whole thing with Hermes being like, Oh yeah, I don't I don't like your fate and I don't wanna have to witness it. It's like, okay, stop having kids like I mean, 
is there some sort of divine vasectomy here? Because uh, apparently the gods are incredibly fertile, you know? <laughs> well, like, she's like, are you five? Like, I don't like this thing, so I'm just going to avoid it forever. It's like, grow up. <laughs> yeah. Like you, like lots of people have to deal with things they don't like, but they don't like run away and stick their heads in the sand. They actually have to deal with it at some point. That usually is a better option overall if you just deal with it instead of just avoiding it until your son wants you to die. Even though Percy's doing his normal self-sacrifice, his, his, you know, fatal flaw here, I do have to commend his mindset here because it is sound when you think of it. And when you think of how much he studied mythology and stuff, really the worst things happen when you are avoiding a prophecy about yourself. So why not just walk into it strong and say, okay, I know that I can make a choice that's either going to, you know, be good or bad. So I'm going to try really, really hard to make the good choice. Yeah. And it it's an overall theme in the Percy Jackson books, like going forward too. Like I know there's a prophecy, of course, for the Heroes of Olympus books. The prophecy, of course, says that somebody is supposed to die. It looks like a certain character is the one that dies but then that character ends up like coming back after like many months of everyone thinking that he's dead mm -hmm. and so because of the prophecy another character ends up dying mirrors the the scene with nico where nico walks in and asks like where's bianca that the mm -hmm. character who comes back walks in and asks where the other one is and everyone has to tell him that he just died because of him and it's that whole thing, he died because of you. Like you came back to life and so he died because somebody in this prophecy was supposed to die. And if you're back to life, then somebody else is gonna die now. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's, I like how Percy as like a series shows these things that sometimes the prophecies don't happen exactly how you think. Like going into the last Olympian, you didn't think that the one that was gonna stab himself to death was going to be Luke, and that's how that ended up going, though. Like, Percy didn't end up having to be the one to go through that, thankfully, when everyone thought for all those years that it was going to be him. Mm -hmm. So, like, you didn't think that Bianca was going to be the one to die in the desert in Titan's Curse either. But it is a thing that this series is very much like, this is just something that's going to happen. And the more that you fight against it, the worse it is. Like, I liked how they did that in the show, how they start off like the big confrontation with Luke and Percy, with Percy just telling Luke, like, yeah, the prophecies always come true. And Luke is like, sometimes they don't. And he's like, no, actually, they, they do. And he lists off every single way that the prophecy came true. And you can see, like, when you know Luke's history and you watch his face in that scene, you can see him, like, trying to fight against it because he knows his own and he doesn't <laughs> want his own to be real. Um, but it is, and it from but like from that scene from the beginning, they just have it set like Percy knows like no, this prophecy happened this way. This is exactly what happened, even if a bunch of really weird stuff happened in between. So I'm not going to fight against it because this is obviously just good, just going to be what happens. Why would I fight against it at this point? It's traumatized people. It's easier to do things on behalf of other people. So basically, doing it for Nico. And because he's carrying that guilt, Bianca is the first death he kind of witnesses. Um, and so for him, like, that's the first big mistake, I guess, is, is how I would put it. And he just, he can't let it go. He can't let Nico go knowing that I am the person and the reason why this, this kid is so hurt, even though that's not true. Yeah, um, yeah it's just so real to who he is.